So many of us are reliant on numbers when it comes to our training and our racing. But what would happen if we ditched the watch? Well, training to feel can actually be a very effective method as long as you listen to the cues and you go by perceived effort. So, what have we got to lose? Let's give it a go. Whether you're new to training or you're simply looking for a break from the numbers, then this is the video for you. I am delighted to rewind, take things back to basics and tune in to our bodies. Well, you might be asking, what will we be missing? Well, if you currently don't train with a watch, then you're not missing anything. That's brilliant. But stick with us because we've got some tips coming up later on. If, however, you do train to numbers, then you're probably going to miss having heart rate to give you that feedback on how hard you're working. You might be missing pace, telling you how fast you're going. And if you have a power meter on your bike, then you might be missing that guidance too. Right, we've ditched the watch. So how do you know how hard to train? Obviously, you'd usually use heart rate for that. Instead, we're going to have to use perceived effort. Unless, of course, you've got a heart condition, then you obviously need to monitor your heart rate closely. Otherwise, we can go off feel. And there's various scales to do this, one of which is the Borg scale of perceived exertion. And that's actually a scale that goes from six up to 20. Six being zero effort, so no effort at all, up to 20 being your absolute maximum. And there's a few clear pointers on the scale. I just need to actually check to share these with you. So we've got um, at seven, um, that's extremely light. Then up to 11 would be light. 15 would be hard. Um, 19, extremely hard. Those are just a few pointers on that scale. Now, I personally prefer to use a scale of one to 10 because it just I think keeps it a little bit more straightforward. Obviously, one being extremely light effort, zero would be um, no effort, and then 10 would be your maximum. And you have to sort of work out the points in between that. Only you're going to know how hard maximum is and you've got to work out those gaps in between. But before ditching your watch, you could actually use it to help you work out your perceived effort. So if you work out your heart rate zones and you can run in each of those zones and really think about, OK, zone one, this feels like a two out of 10, for example, and then work it out from that. So you've got that sort of memory bank and use conversation to help too. bear with me on this one. Yes, I actually speak out loud sometimes when I'm training without a watch because it just helps me to sort of work out how hard I'm working. For example, if I was doing a, a threshold hard effort and I could get a full sentence out, I know I need to work a little bit harder. And then you could use that in the other way. Say you've got a zone one or a zone two, nice, easy bike or run, then go with a friend that you want to have a really good chat with. And if it becomes too difficult to talk, you know you're probably working too hard. And we can actually put that into the scale. So if you've got your heart rate zones, we can just transfer it over to that one out of one to 10. So for example, two to four is a very light effort to air zone one. And that would be 50 to 60% of your maximum heart rate. And you should be able to have a normal conversation like I am now. Then we've got zones four to five, which is light. Uh, zone two, 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. And that's going to be a conversation um, with a few breath intervals, but still, you know, a flowing conversation. Now we move up to five to seven out of 10. That's where the moderate work starts to happen. You're in zone three and that's 70 to 80% of your maximum heart rate. So your sentences will get a little bit shorter. You will need to stop and take a breath, obviously not stop your exercise, but take a breath in between those sentences and you'll start to find that you won't be able to talk quite as fluently as before. Now we reach seven to nine. This is where the hard work happens. This is a hard effort in zone four. So you're at 80 to 90% of that maximum heart rate and really you should only manage one or two words before needing to really get your breath back so it's going to be not a particularly sociable effort and then of course we have 10 out of 10 which is maximum 90 to 100 percent of your maximum heart rate and no you shouldn't be able to talk at that level Heart rate isn't the only metric you're going to be missing. What about pace? Well, unless you are cycling on a flat road with no wind, you're running on a smooth surface where there's no hills or you're swimming somewhere with zero current and it's completely flat water, your pace is unlikely to stay the same even if you're putting in a continuous effort. And actually training to pace can be a little bit limiting because of that. So embrace perceived effort and you can get a lot more out of your training. 
Training to feel does come with some challenges, of course. You can start to overthink everything and analyze every bit of effort, which defeats the object, because the whole point of this is being able to relax and purely embrace going through the motions and actually doing the training itself. And you have to learn to listen to your body. Yes, I've talked about that already, but some days you just might not be feeling it and you need to back off and let your body recover and it will come back stronger the next day. Other days, if you're feeling good, then go ahead and push it a bit. So you've got a bit more freedom to adapt your training. And it is a fine line between working out if you're just feeling a little bit lazy and lethargic or actually if your body is tired and needs a rest. And it comes with practice, not the being lazy part, obviously, but understanding where that line is. And sometimes you might make a mistake and overtrain a little bit, but you'll soon learn, trust me. And then if you're being coached, it does pose some challenges because obviously coaches, especially if they're working with you remotely, want to see numbers so they can help analyze exactly how your training is going. But speak with your coach and try to adapt those numbers to your perceived effort. It will take a little bit more communication to start with. But when I first started training for an Ironman, I didn't have a smartwatch of any sort. I purely put my phone in my pocket and recorded my speed on Strava, um, no heart rate. And it came to running, I just used a stopwatch. And I'd got to a fairly decent level with that. I must admit that I think my coach was relieved when I did get a smartwatch for Christmas. <laughs> Well, let's break each discipline down and have a closer look on how you can use RPE, rate of perceived exertion. With swimming, there's quite a few options here. And obviously, if you're doing open water, you're gonna to struggle to see pace or use a watch anyway. So you can start off by using your strokes as a measurement of a duration. So say you want to do some intervals, well, focus on working hard for say 50 strokes, then do 20 strokes easy and repeat that. And you know you've got the set same time each time and you can even measure that if you wanted or if you had a distance between two boys then you can use that as your hard effort you've also got the option of well I guess just listening to your breath and how hard you're working say you're swimming at one effort and you're quite comfortable in a bilateral breathing pattern and then that gets too difficult and you need to opt to a two breathing pattern well that will show you've got a change in effort and at the end of the day though with swimming a lot of your work needs to be on technique which obviously a watch would bring no advantage there anyway Ride with a club and you'll soon see evidence that you don't need to have metrics to be a good cyclist. It's amazing how many still don't actually have bike computers or if they do, it's there purely for a navigational tool. Now cycling effort is dictated by who you're riding with, the terrain and even the weather conditions. If you do want to do a set distance when it comes to efforts, then stay local and you can plan your route according to road signs or maybe choose a nice hill to do reps up and you'll soon get a good work out of that one. And if you want to ride in a group or with friends, but you're intending on sticking to a training program, let them know what your intended effort is for that day. Because say you're just sticking to zone one or two, then you're going to do a lot of drafting. It's probably best you let your friends know first. Finally, we've got running and a lot of the cycling tips cross over here. Conversation levels are a brilliant tool, as I've already mentioned, and hill reps are brilliant for getting in those hard bits of work where heart rate and pace really don't matter. And if you're doing really short intervals, it's actually best to ignore heart rate because of the lag you get. And then you can use friends to help pace. You say you've got a friend who runs naturally at a pace that's just a little bit uncomfortable for you. Well, if you've got a zone three tempo effort, ask them to join you. Optimizing fitness and progression is all about that balance between pushing your body hard and recovering adequately. And yes, your watch will give you numbers and metrics to help measure that, but only you know how you feel on the day. And quite often our body will give us warning signs before it'll even show up on the numbers. And it's easy to ignore that when you're focusing on training to numbers with your watch or you know you've got a hard session planned that day. But you can get a lot more out of yourself if you do start to just tune in and listen a little bit more. And again, it's working out that fine line between fatigue and lack of fitness, something I've um, realized recently during lockdown. Well, anyway, the whole point of this is to bring it back to basics and for you to just go out there and purely enjoy training. And now is a great time to do a little bit of an experiment with that. And actually, Mark Fraser and I did our own experiment recently where we headed out to run 10K, or at least try to run 10K. We got rid of our watches and we just went to see how good we were at gauging our pace and distance. Turned out, I wasn't that great, but if you want to have a watch, go and check that video out. And remember, give us a like and you can follow us on our social media channels too.